Welcome to the GCN Show. Coming up this week, should the UCI actually be banning so many things? And what, if anything, would you ban if you could? The Strava police have made an arrest and we bring you news of a record-breaking ride across India and a carbon toilet seat. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that the women's world hour record has just been broken. Joss Loudon of the Drops cycling team rode 48.160 metres, which was 153 metres further than the previous mark set by Vittoria Bussi of Italy. However, it is officially unofficial as no timekeepers were present, but Ollie was there and we will have a video up on GCN coming soon. Yeah, tell you what Connor, this time the curse of GCN wasn't that she didn't break the record. It was that she did break the record, but that unfortunately it doesn't count, which, uh, which is harsh. But anyway, never mind. Um, we also learned this week that Giro d'Italia winner Teo Gagan Hart really does know what he's talking about. He tweeted this after the Tour de la Provence. People talk about what is good for cycling. I'll tell you what is good for cycling. Matt and Dan's commentary. Insightful and able to identify riders. With Adam Blythe in the mix, cycling has a chance to attract a new and engaged audience. More of the same, please, GCN. How cool is that, mate? Mm, plenty more to come too, although I did see this in response from Dan. Maybe I'll stump up a bit more for a Grand Tour winner. Well, I know, but let's face it, Connor, you can get a lot with 20 quid these days including a year's pass to GCN Plus if you get in before the end of February. Now, we also learned this week that some people think that racing just might not quite be the same this year. Why not, Si? Well, because they banned the Super Tuck, didn't they? Yes, the UCI made waves by banning those two extreme aero positions, the Super Tuck and the imaginary TT bars, and it's still causing turbulent waters in cycling, isn't it? In fact, even aerodynamic specialist Swiss side got involved this week with a bit of quick wind tunnel testing. Their conclusion was that by banning the uh, imaginary TT bars, it'd be costing riders 20 watts at 50k an hour, and by banning the Super Tuck, it will be costing riders 5k an hour on descent. And their conclusion that they drew from this was that it would make racing uh, less exciting and therefore less entertaining. Spoken like true aero nerds, so. Si. Well, yeah. Yeah, basically, I can see the frustration, right? But I can't see the logic because surely if everyone can be in the super tuck, it's kind of exactly the same as no one being able to go in the super tuck. That's right? a true point. Yeah, anyway. I don't agree with Swiss side, but I do agree with the ban, if you'll know, as you'll know, in fact, if you watched the GCN show last week. In essence, I think I'd rather not wait until somebody was seriously injured or died by being the super tuck before the UCI banned it. So uh, there we go. But the fallout from last week's show did get us thinking, should the UCI actually be restricting the sport like this? And if you were in charge, would you ban anything, if at all? Yeah, I think the argument for not is letting the sport find its natural way, let technology develop, and as a result, it will be more exciting. However, I'd like to point you to F1 in this point because, well, they've allowed things to develop to the point of boredom, really, but they still have restrictions in place. They do indeed, yeah. And also, I was thinking that if you did remove all UCI rules, as we saw from Hank and Manon's video at the weekend, we'd all be riding around on recumbents. And I'm not sure we'd want to watch that. Wondering what? Come on! Good for social distancing though, isn't it, Si? That is true, actually, isn't it? And she did look warm as well. Are you going to get out of that, Manon? No, it's, it's nice and warm in here, actually. I'd rather not. She did look warm. And I think she was warm, and Manon liked reminders of that throughout the whole day when she, you know, shut that door on the top of that recumbent. Fair play, Manon. <sighs> That's it. <laughs> The UCI are the sports governing body though, and they do have to make decisions that won't prove popular to everyone. I mean, that's kind of the nature of a governing body really, isn't it? But still, let's look at some of the rules on that banned list and see if we can give some tips to help them out. Firstly, the Lugana Charter of 1996, ban on bikes that are less than 6.8 kilos in weight size. Scrap that rule, Connor, scrap it. Yeah. Not because I particularly want loads of lightweight bikes, I'm actually not that much of a fan. I think more just the fact that 
most riders wouldn't get a 6.8 kilo bike either. I just don't think it's that important. Okay. So I think we can just get rid of it. One less bit of red tape. Okay, fair enough. Well, in that case, I think we should ban long shorts. You know, we've banned long socks, so why not go the full whack and ban long shorts as well? I think so limit it. A peloton of riders in hot pants. It's kind of what you're after. Well, I mean, not quite hot pants, but I mean, you could at least limit it halfway down the quad, I think, so. Is this just because you can't have long shorts, Connor, because they don't make them long enough? No. You know, just put bib tights on and pull them up a couple of inches. Anyway, you know, forget, forget that one then, forget that one. But I think we should ban black shoes and white socks. Yeah? Yeah. I disagree. I think there's a lot of riders out there that can pull off black shoes and white socks. Better than black shoes and black socks. So, um, actually, why don't we just ban black shoes? That'll sort it out. And whilst we're at it, ban red ones. Oh, What's red that? ones? What's wrong with red ones? Well, I just don't like them. Oh. Um, now, what about power meters? There's been a lot of calls over the years for banning power meters from the professional peloton. Yeah, I think we should ban power meters. Yeah, yeah I think, yeah, scrap them. Although, I am undecided on what difference it would make to racing because I just don't think pro riders use their power meters to win a race. I think they use it a lot in training, but if you look at riders like Van Aert, Alaphilippe, Van der Poel, I really don't think that they're looking at their head unit when they're putting down an absolutely whoppingly massive attack to win a bike race. Well, yeah, and actually, if Wout Van Aert or Matthew Van der Poel looked at their power numbers whilst they were racing, they'd probably have to conclude that their power meters were broken because they were so big. Yeah, I don't know if those numbers would actually fit on their head unit, to be honest. They might... no, that's a good point, you'd have to zoom out quite a lot, wouldn't they? Yeah, or use two head units, you know, have the you know, first three digits there and the last four digits <laughs> <laughs> but Anyway, all this talk about UCI rules has got me thinking because, well, cycling has broken free from its unwritten rules. Those unwritten rules are, you know, more unfashionable than black shoes and white socks, which is a good thing for cycling because it means it's more inclusive and less snobby. That's right, yeah. Let's face it, when you're out riding a bike, the only rules that should apply are the rules of the road, isn't it? Like, one of the best things about cycling is that you are completely free. But, and there is a but here, isn't there, Connor? There are certain guidelines, should we say, we're not calling them rules, but specifically when you're riding with other people. Guidelines that help keep everyone happy and crucially safe. So, a guideline that suggests that you should point out potholes for those riders behind you that can't see them, or indeed you ride in a straight line when you're in a group, or indeed ride at a pace that won't kill everyone else in the group with you. Yeah, that's a good point. And I think the thing to really bear in mind is that you have to be able to tell people that they're maybe not obeying to those rules in a way that doesn't you know, come across too strong or make you seem like a total jackass. That's right. That is the key point, isn't it? Basically, there are no rules in cycling other than don't be a snob or don't be a jackass. Only unless you want to go and ride on your own, of course. That's right, you can be as much of a jackass as you like when you're on your own. Actually, no, that's not quite true either. Please don't be a jackass when you ride by yourself. You see them, don't you, every now and then? Guys like yeah. screaming at cars or like, you know, just generally being jackasses. Yeah. So don't do that. That's true. Maybe, you know, stay in your garage without an internet connection, with the lights off and no windows. Yeah, that's a really good point. I like that. Um, now, We'd be super, super interested to hear your thoughts on this. As I said, after last week's show, a brief mention, there was quite a bit of fallout from it. So, uh, so please get involved in the comment section. Do you think the UCI are overstepping their remit by restricting the sport in this way? Or actually, do you think rules are by and large a good thing for cycling? So, uh, so let us know in the comment section down below. Normally at this point in the show, Connor, the last few weeks, we've been saying over to Connor's Wift now. We made a little joke out of it each week. Um, to find out how your training's going as you get back to full fitness. As soon as you're here, I'm just gonna ask you, how's training going, Connor? Yeah, it's going good actually, Si. I'm actually really happy with myself. Um, I'm starting to feel the sessions become that little bit easier. Oh. I'm, I'm afraid to say it because I'm setting myself up for a fall, but last Thursday's sweet spot session, we had about 300 people on the ride actually. It was a great ride. Um, it went well, and I was feeling comfortable in each interval, so. So the numbers are going up, you reckon? I think they're going up. I mean, a week ago I did the Movistar race, I'm not sure if you remember that. I do. Um, and my FTP had snuck up after that. I didn't want to shout about it because I was, you know, I'm, I'm trying to fly under the radar a little bit here. Um, but I think I might have to do another FTP test because I want to get the most out of my training. Um, so I, I do want to make sure I'm really pushing myself to the max in each session. So I think I might, you know, schedule one in 
this week at some point. Nice. Well, mm. you heard it here first, folks. Fighting talk from Connor Zwift. Yeah, yeah. So, but I did have a great weekend actually, Sai. Si. So after completing that sweet spot session, I went out with Jesse at the weekend with a trailer. It was absolutely freezing here. <laughs> so we wrapped him up. He had four layers on, two blankets, a hot water bottle, and a warm bottle of milk. So he was having a great time. As, yeah, isn't so. that what Manon took in her recumbent? It is. I actually learned a few lessons from my son, right. even though I was freezing on the bike, but we had a great ride together. And um, then on Sunday, I decided to do a little lap of Richmond in Zwift, um, which was where I actually did another World Championship, so it kind of brought back some nice memories. So I decided just to take it easy, just do a little lap. Um, brought back memories of the easy, crafty ride before the race, um, and a few painful memories of the actual race. <laughs> nice. Well, um, a quick reminder yeah. then for everyone, because you, you can train along with you, can't you? Like, what? Yeah. when are you doing it? Thursdays so, and Tuesdays? Every Tuesday and Thursday, 9.30am. If you want to join me, I'd love to have you there. We're having a great time. There's a good bit of banter actually going on in the chat whilst we're whilst we're training. Well, um, there was until you move your FTP up. Um, yeah, you're going to be silent so, from now on, aren't you? Yeah, that's true. I have been getting used to voice typing in that chat. So there's a few spelling mistakes, but uh, good session coming up on Thursday. 9.30am, we have a VO2 max. It's called a 233 or a 332. Not sure what that means or what that will entail but it's going to be great fun, so please do join me if you can. Nice, and if you can't do 9.30 a.m. UK time, then there are other sessions throughout the day, aren't there, where you get to do your exclusive secret training plan yeah. with everyone else. Yeah, nice. so there'll be four other sessions throughout the day, so if you do miss that morning session, please do join us along and complete the session, because they are great, actually, and really, the training's flying by. So. Yeah, well, I can't do the morning one because I'm working, unfortunately, but... Um... We'll send you an invite, so... Thanks, anyway. Sorry. Sorry, I'm just going to have to interrupt for one second. Um, now you might have noticed I've just changed my jumper and found a comfy sofa to sit on. And that is because I'm currently filming the world of cycling sometime in the future. Uh, now the world of cycling is an exclusive show available on GCM Plus where we run through everything that is big in professional cycling in that week. But the reason I'm doing this is because it just occurred to me that you might not know about some of the amazing racing that is coming up next week, specifically the UAE Tour, which is the first men's world tour race of the season. And there's some huge names lining up. Tade Pogacar, we've got Adam Yates, we've got Chris Froome, we've got Fernando Gaviria, we've got Sam Bennett, to name but just five of the hitters that are there. So it's a seven day race that's starting next weekend and it is available to view ad free and on demand as well as live over on GCM Plus. So that, in addition to Tour de Oakvar Alp Maritime, plus the 24 documentaries that have just landed on GCM Plus, you are gonna be busy. Um, so I'm sorry about that. I figured it's probably just a case of organization and maybe prioritizing as well. So perhaps you could get some snacks nearby so you don't need to waste time going to the kitchen. Um, and then just sort of cut out things that you don't nearly need to do like bathing and things like that. And then you should be able to find the time to do it all. Uh, but there we go. Right, anyway, back to you, Connor, and, um, and me in a red jumper, which looks mighty fly. GCN Inspiration next, that part of the show where we cherry pick three of the very best inspirational photos or videos that you've uploaded to the GCN app in the last week. Connor, do you want to get started with third place and third prize, in fact? Yeah, and if this is a fantastic photo from Tom Harris in New Zealand. Congratulations, Tom. A GCM bottle will be heading your way. Nice. Now, this is, is this the best ever bike build location site? I mean, I'm going to say yeah, because that is fantastic. It's giving me quite a lot of wanderlust as well. Off the plane and straight to the trail, built and riding in an hour. Congratulations, in Queenstown, New Zealand. You can have all the wanderlust you want at the moment, Connor, when it comes to uh, New Zealand, but you ain't going anywhere near it, are no, you, no, unfortunately? So that's even more powerful. It's like the forbidden fruit, isn't it? Mm. Summertime, beautiful mountains. Anyway, never mind. At some point, we'll get to go back. Never been to New Zealand, always wanted to go. Mm. Uh, right, in second place this week, uh, winning a GCN Cobbled Classics t-shirt. It's not far off now, opening weekend in Belgium oh, coming up exciting. soon. Ooh, uh, and a cool red t-shirt uh, is this one, uh, sent in by Eric Cox TCU. I love this. Cycling outside Fort Worth, Texas. A friend of mine snapped this photo of me on a cool, wet, 65-mile Saturday morning ride just south of Fort Worth, Texas. And uh, that is cool, isn't it? Yeah, there is something like, it's obviously not inspirational in a kind of, there's no sun, there's no blue skies, there's no mountains, but equally, that's a wicked photo, isn't it? I love it. It's the open road, isn't it? And I do mm. love those long, straight roads in the US. They're just, ah, oh, they're fantastic. Brilliant photo. Yeah. Right then, in first place this week, Connor, who takes the biscuit? 
So first place and winner of a GCN Core Red sweatshirt, a GCN Elite water bottle, and a Word Logo t-shirt, Stargazer and Silver is Giga Mesh. I love the way you said that, like you knew what it was. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be a photo, don't worry. <laughs> well, this is Winter Cycling in Austria and, well, that's fantastic, isn't that it? That is a cool mm, photo, isn't minus it? Minus eight. And as Giga Mesh has pointed out, as my athletics trainer used to say, there's no such thing as wrong weather, only wrong clothing. So that's right. Minus eight degrees. So what did he need, Connor? Uh, two blankets, four layers and a hot water bottle. Isn't that right? Yeah, and a warm bottle of milk too, just to sip on as you're going along. Nice. Oh, that is cool, isn't it? That is absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you very much uh, to the three of you that won, and also countless others of you that upload fantastic photos each and every week that you can, of course, enjoy perusing at your leisure on the GCN app. It's now time for Cycling Shorts. Cycling Shorts now, you might remember that we talked about British pro Tom Pidcock's rather remarkable 5K run last week. Well, the Strava police have been investigating Cycling. They have. In fact, the Strava police have even posted a video about it. Um, their investigation showed that he actually ran it in 15 minutes 38 as opposed to 13 minutes 25. So a little bit more than 50 seconds off world record pace. Although, let's be fair to the lad, that's still a remarkably quick time for a bike rider, isn't it? Um, what is unfortunate for Tom, though, is that the Strava police have also recommended a four-minute time penalty for wearing stupid trainers. Oh, trainers? Yeah. I thought Strava police were cyclists. Well, they must be if they're wanting to ban shoes, but... Um... Our World Athletics have rules about trainers, so actually. Ah, uh, that explains mm. it. Okay. Uh, right, now we'll move on from one cycling wonder kid to another. Remco Evenepoel, who you remember had that horrific crash at Il Lombardia last year. But fortunately, he has finally been cleared to resume training again. And doctors are hoping that he's going to be back in action in time for the Giro d'Italia, which is fantastic news. That is fantastic news. And unfortunately, slightly less good news is that Peter Sagan has actually tested positive for COVID-19. He was at a training camp in Gran Canaria with his brother Yuri and teammate Eric Basker. Now that was a private training camp, so the trio were there together. They actually completed the training camp. They were due to fly home, so they took a customary COVID test, which then returned a positive result. Now, they're remaining in isolation and are said to be feeling quite well. However, this has kind of derailed their plans to return to yeah, racing in Europe. It will. Mm. And remember, Peter and Yuri and Eric, that you've got to take an extra 10 days off after your symptoms resolve as well. So there we go. Remember that, it's important. We don't want you to get long COVID, chaps. Yeah, it's a good point, Si. Indian cyclist Dr. Amit Samarath is taking on a new challenge. Currently the only man in Asia to have completed both the Ram and the Trans-Siberian Extreme. Nice. Yeah, Dr. Amit will be taking on the uh, Golden Quadrilateral, which is a route in India 6,000 kilometers long, connecting major cities of New Delhi, Mumbai, Calcutta and Chennai. He's doing it to raise funds for Lok Biradari Prakalp, which is uh, an initiative to basically help promote sports for young people in rural India. And if you want to follow his progress, he's got all sorts of cool live tracking devices, hasn't he? Um, then you can go to www.rideacrossindia.com. Yeah, good fantastic. URL to have. Mm. Good luck to Dr. Amit. But yeah. Sai, how about this for a bike bridge? This is the longest bike bridge in Europe, Ooh. to be precise. At 800 meters long, it traverses a man-made lake, a canal, a nature reserve, and a motorway. Nice. Mm. Dedicated solely to bike riders and pedestrians. It cost a cool six and a half million euros. But if I'm honest, Connor, 800 meters, pa. The world's biggest bike bridge, Yamen Bicycle Skyway in China, 7.4 kilometers long. That's a bike bridge. Okay, wow, that's pretty impressive actually. It is long. But anyway, Sai, si, whilst we're on the topic of things that are long, I've got something to show you, okay? So, these oh, are thank God. my new shoes. Check it out. <laughs> nice segue, Connor. Those are DMT shoes, which we are delighted to say are gonna be our new shoe partner here on GCN. So, yeah. you've, you've gone for black. Connor. I have gone for black ones, Sai, si, because I think I need to stick up for black shoes because I love them. And I, I do love these shoes, actually. I've used them twice now and I tell you they are fantastic. Nice. Really getting on well with I've them. ordered a pair of white ones, which are amazing. And I'm still waiting for my black ones for days when it's not appropriate to wear white, which is unfortunately quite a lot of time here in the UK, isn't it? Um, but yeah, absolutely mega. DMC been knocking around since 1996, you know, and they even supply shoes to Tade Pogacar, mm. as well as Ollie Bridgewood. So that's pretty cool, mm. isn't it? Um, did you get a shoehorn with those? A shoehorn? I didn't get a shoehorn, actually. Uh, so. 
I must have got the next ones up. The uh, KS1, I got a shoehorn. VIP experience. I've never so. used a shoehorn before, but I'm going to now. Mm. It's like, oh, I like it very much. Can I uh, borrow it? Yeah. Um, yeah, you can. Uh, when COVID's gone. It probably wouldn't be COVID to keep yeah, share true. shoehorns at the moment. Yeah. Um, now, this jumped out to me on Twitter the other day. John Cannings, formerly of GCN Tech, has got a posh new toilet seat made of carbon fibre. Wow. Look at that. That's a serious bog high. Isn't it just? And also snakeskin on the floor by Ooh. the look of it, which uh, which is a cracking... Yeah. Uh, I wonder if he'd let me borrow seat. that when COVID's over as well. Well, he might, actually, if you ask him nicely, he might. I'll, might send, I'll send him a message. Yeah, right, now before we leave Cycling Shorts for this week, we've got, uh, we've got a competition winner to oh. announce, haven't we? The amazing prize from Spokes Training. So uh, this was a year full coaching, a personalised performance coaching experience, no less, uh, with uh, performance director at Spokes, Pav Bryan. And the winner, ready? Can we have a little drum roll, please? Go on, I'm... It's not your best work, mate. But anyway, uh, Awab Abdullah uh, from Finland. So congratulations to you. Uh, you have got a year's coaching, which is awesome. Um, so yeah, congratulations yeah, to you. Fantastic stuff. Well done, Abdullah. I tell you what, I quite fancy a year's coaching right now. Mm. That'd be good. Well, you, you're going to be flying at the end of all this, aren't you? Well, you're going to have to up your game a bit, Saif. You're going to, you know, yeah. figure in that TT bike race. Okay, now it's time for our favourite, well, my favourite time of the show. Yeah. Actually, I love this bit, yeah. It is hack forward slash bodge, where you guys submit any changes or kind of tweaky little updates you've done to your bike or equipment, and we decide if it's a hack or a bodge. Indeed so. we do. Right, first up, we've got this one sent in by Jam Price 2006. Uh, spray dot bike, Concord rattle can fixie. So a spray dot bike make, um, or spray paint specifically for spraying bikes. Uh, and used to good effect, I think, on that one. Yeah. Very nice indeed. Yeah. Rebuilt onto a fixie. Uh, it Sorry, it took them eight and a half hours to strip the frame for the paint as well. Wow. That's some commitment. That is commitment. I think you can just spray over the paint with spray dot bike. Anyway, I don't want to. I don't want to belittle <laughs> your eight and a half hours of hard <laughs> labour. But uh, anyway, I like that very much. Yeah, that's a hack for me. That's a hack for me. Yeah, yeah. Nice yeah. One. Well done. Hack. Good job. Yeah. Right then. Solid hack. Next up, this is from Barker White and new old shoes. Leather paint and fabric pens equals new pair of shoes out of old faithfuls. Very so, cool. Yeah, it's pretty snazzy actually. Uh, yeah, I like that very Ooh. much actually. Well, partly because they're white, which is uh, excellent, as we've heard, colour for shoes. With um, a blue camo effect as well, Yeah, I think. Yeah, fair play, that's a hack from me. Yeah, I'll go for a hack as well, yeah, nice job. Nice, well all right. Uh, next up, we've got, uh, well, more shoes, kind of. Um, this is sent in by um, Joachim Hagland. Uh, recycled sole. I had such poor grip with my flat man's bike shoes in the snow, so I glued some old tyres on. <laughs> I Genius, like this. look at that. Yeah. It took me a while to figure out what was going on there, but now I see it, that's fantastic. Can oh, I tell cool. you a, a really boring story from the old days? Yeah. So when I was uh, racing as a mountain bike pro, back in the day, uh, I used to want to race in road shoes. I don't know why. I think partly because I thought they were cooler than mountain bike shoes. Anyway, um, obviously road shoes haven't got much grip, so I used to uh, glue uh, old tyres onto the bottom of my road shoes so I could use them in mountain bike racing. Really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Boring, uh, boring story for you there. Um, did we say hack for that one? Yeah, I'd go for a hack. I like that. Yeah. Nice. I'm guessing it's a hack from you as well. It is a hack from me, yeah. 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 You look like you loved that story, by the way. That's I did, cool. no, it was an interesting one, Sorry. Yeah, thanks, mate, thanks. Uh, right then, who's next, mate? So next up we have Nobby, and this is a repurposed bottle cage. The For best... what? Oh, that's what I was trying to figure out as well, Sai. The best offensive is, is a great defence. Snowballs! Oh, no, I see it, yeah. That is a cracking idea. Yeah. Two snowballs, just having, and I tell you what, as well, they look like the kind of icy snowballs <laughs> that really would hurt. Yeah, the ones when you take it a bit too far yeah. and someone gets hurt. Which, uh, when you say uh, take an action, um, joyfully exuberant youths, they're, they're not going to be chasing, like giving you any grief after, are they, when you hit them with an ice <laughs> ball? Not. Nice, Ooh, Nobby, nice. Yeah, there you good go. Work. And you could escape quite quickly on your e bike. Mm. I'm worried he's going to lose one. You know, he could, I could run a mock. Yeah, good point, actually. So. Should we say bodge then? Yeah, it's a bodge because you, I think you need to maybe you know lower your, your snowball intake a little yeah. bit. Yeah. 
Also, if you've got crazy skills, you can just reach down, can you, as you're riding along, grab a handful of snow, then yeah, that'd be the class. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, just maybe next winter, Nobby, polish your skills. Uh, right then, this one sent in by Burn, vinyl details. I love my Candel System 6, but the design is a tad boring, he says. Controversial. Uh, I use my vinyl circuit maker to add a pop of colour and Cannondale on the down tube. Well, I tell you what, that's quite cool, isn't it? I've never thought about it. DIY vinyl graphics on your bike. Yeah, that's pretty, that's definitely, that's definitely above my skill level, but yeah, that's mine pretty too. cool, yeah. Well, it's oh, a hack for me. Yeah, hack. I like the bike as well. He's, that's, I don't want to make it up, making the bike fault, I think, as well, so. Oh, yeah, I think it could, yeah. Mm, Very yeah, nice, nice indeed. Hack, yeah. hack. Moving on to the next one, and this has been sent in from Eniko LastJR. Uh, a, Swift, a Zwift card as a disc brake blocker. A Zwift card. Oh, okay. So basically, they've used a one-month Zwift subscription that came with the Turbo Trainer to use as a disc brake blocker, which is um, a very, very simple hack or bodge. But I mean, it works. It does work. You just got to make sure that. Well, I think that probably is just about thick enough, isn't it? Just yeah, about. Yeah. If you if they still pulled the brakes, could it still cause an issue? Well, I don't know. You'd be all right. Yeah. You could you could squeeze them once or twice. And it's not nothing's gonna happen. Oh, really? But yeah, maybe just fold it one more time. And then, boom, job's mm. good. Did uh, you know if you if you folded that 134 times, it would be bigger than the known universe? Just a stat for you. Sorry, what? <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you, if you fold a piece of paper, I think it's an A4 piece of paper, 134 times, it's bigger than the, the known universe. That's one of the coolest facts we've ever had in 420 something <laughs> episodes of GCN. I don't know where I built, picked that from from my brain. Well. <laughs> Undoubtedly, someone in the comment section, Fast Marta, the new I, Connor, will, will elaborate on that. Yeah, and I'm sure I'm wrong by a couple of folds. I'm sure it's 130, but it is around well, 134 for sure. Please, let us know in the comment section after you've had a little rant about the UCI Bionic stuff. Then uh, if you could just let us know about that as well, mm. that'd be fantastic. Um, right, okay. Uh, ooh, look at this. We're going to oh. finish with a cracker. This is from Pepe2107, the coolest bike ever. Agreed. Oh wow. Even cooler, this is a one-eighth scale model that they built from scratch. Oh, How amazing is that? Look at the detail on it, I'm zooming in. You that's keep fantastic. zooming, mate. Yeah. That's unbelievable. That's really nice. That's, well, that's an obvious hack. I don't know yeah. what the 15% who voted bodge are thinking. No. Um, no. Why, why would you do that? That's crazy, yeah. isn't it? And what would be quite amusing as well is that Hank stood next to that, which is probably what you look like. It stood next to a normal bike, isn't it? <laughs> oh dear. Never gets old, does it? <laughs> Sorry. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Okay, time for caption competition now, where you guys submit your uh, attempts at a caption and you get the chance to win a bottle as a result. Beautiful bottle right there. Oh, so, yeah. last week's photo was a rather sandy cyclocross affair and, well, brilliant caption this one. I it think, was so, good, yeah. wasn't it? Sent in by Olive Ogrel. I wonder if this really is what my coach meant when he said, in order to win, you sometimes have to dig deep. Nice. Wait. Nice See one. what you did there. I like that very much. Yeah. Okay, this week's photo for you to get your teeth stuck into is this one of Michael Hepburn. I don't know what it is about this car, but he looks deeply uncomfortable, doesn't he? He does. So much so that it has inspired my caption. Oh, really? Here he goes, Go yeah. on. <clears throat> That's nice. Michael Hepburn looking deeply uncomfortable in new UCI rule, descending in the saddle. Now, admittedly, there's not like a witty caption, but I think when you read that or hear it in tandem with the photo, you know, go, ah, yeah, see what we did there. Dan will be back next week, don't worry. Okay, on to comment of the week now, and to start us off, we have this brilliant comment sent in by Tom Inglefield. Great session again at 71. I picked up the GCN hit sessions three times a week and already seeing improvements on the road. So congratulations, Tom, that is really impressive. That is awesome, isn't it? Yeah, brilliant. Well, yeah, those GCN training sessions, they are, they are great to train long to, aren't they? So, uh, so yeah, well done, Tom. Uh, now, we had that video last week about how to get back to cycling if you've had COVID. And I asked you to put any experiences that you've had down in the comments. And it's unbelievable. A lot of people have had a really rough time, which is kind of unsurprising, isn't it? But, um, but thank you very much for, for letting us know. Um, a few here that we pulled out. Um, we've got uh, Michael, sorry. Michael Bratt. Michael Bratt, mm. thank you very much. Uh, yeah, Michael Bratt, um, 
He's uh, been suffering from fatigue and brain fog six weeks on. Uh, we've got Rory Coxill, it's taken him a year. Uh, Mrs. Esther Huizen, uh, eight months after COVID, still struggling with symptoms. So, uh, so yeah, please do take it seriously. And, uh, you know, don't rush, I think, is the, is the yeah. thing to come back. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, I did like this one as well. Uh, Galen Keller said, um, under the, the line about some cyclists experience debilitating fatigue, um, our editor put shots of Ollie there, which, uh, you know, I don't know whether that was intentional. I don't think it was, um, but there we go. He did say he was training at the weekend, Si. Oh, so, did he? Mm. Well, that's good to hear. Anyway, moving on, and I love this comment, actually, on uh, the recumbent versus road bike video. This was sent in by Steep Tachanka. Uh, I feel like they sleep in their cycling kits. Do you sleep in yours? I bet you did when you won the Irish Nationals, didn't you? I might have done. <laughs> I did sleep in it in the Donegal 555 in the back of a car as well. Yeah, good point. Um, Only when we're desperate. Not sure I'd recommend it. I think Manon slept in that recumbent that night, actually. She was having so much fun in it. She was, yeah. yeah. Um, interestingly, a lot of people um, asking for a recumbent versus TT bike rematch, which, um, well, we did think you'd ask for that, so we made one. Right, Si, you ready? I'm ready. Always. Three, two, one, go. Is that all you got? <laughs> so there is one coming up this Saturday. So uh, stay tuned for that one. Recumbent versus me on a TT bike. So uh, yeah, we'll see. Check in, check in on Saturday for that one. Um, and then uh, also under the bike jargon video, I did chuckle with this one. c &E wrote, O is for Ollie and also off the back. Is that a coincidence? <laughs> <laughs> well, Poor Ollie. Yeah. Bless him. I like this one as well, which was on the how to make endurance rides less boring video sent in by Scott. And they said, whatever Hank had that morning, I want some. Well, I'm telling you, I'm still trying to figure out what Hank's had every morning. Oh, uh, my word. Yeah, it's like a... Human dynamo. Yeah, if Hank's around, uh, nothing is, is boring, is it really? No. Uh, yeah, my word. Uh, right then, what is coming up on GCN over the next seven days? Conan, do you want to take it away? Yep, on Wednesday we have Bike Fit Tips, I believe that's with Manon. Indeed. And on Thursday we have... A GCN training session over on GCN training. Yep. So, um, so Thursdays is without music, uh, Mondays is with music, if you fancy that. Yep, and Friday we have Mark Beaumont's Retro versus Modern Record Breaking Bikes with Hank. Hank took a trip up to Scotland. So yeah, that's, that's fascinating. You should, like, just a picture of those two bikes that he rode around the world on, mm. how different they are. It's absolutely bonkers. Yeah. Uh, then on Saturday, as mentioned, we have Recumbent versus TT bikes, so do make sure you tune in for that one. Uh, and then on Sunday, possibly our biggest production on GCN Plus. We want to give you a little bit of extra insight into it. This is Hank and Mark Beaumont searching for and then riding down the world's longest downhill which is mm. uh, which is an absolute epic so yeah. Uh, so yeah you can get a little sneak peek of that one on sunday over here on gcn or of course you could just subscribe to gcn plus because it is available now on the app so uh, so yeah and i know we've banged on about this already today but the half price introductory offer is only going to last until the end of february so if you're tempted get in now because 20 pounds for the year, or 20 euros, or 24 dollars 99 is just, it's just ridiculous. So do it. Thanks for watching everyone. Don't forget, if you do want to get a bit of training done, I'm leading a session on Zwift, Thursday morning, 9.30am, so please do come along and ride with me if you fancy it. That's right, mm. and of course, we talked about it already in the show, but there is some amazing racing on at the moment. We've got Tour de Ovar this week, and of course UAE Tour as well. So some of the world's biggest riders, out and uh, flexing their muscles early season so yeah. do make sure you check those out of course some geo restrictions do apply so do make sure you check um, but then if geo restrictions apply why don't you just watch one of the 24 amazing new films and documentaries that have just landed on gcn plus so uh, and i'm not sorry for telling you again because we cannot wait for you guys to start watching these we've been making them for so long we're just desperate for people to see them and uh, to let us know what you think as well so please do